Hi, I'm Karen Q, and I wonder, have you ever thought about how some of the streets in New York City got their names? Now, if you walked around New York City in Midtown, you walked around what we call the grid with the avenues and streets numbered. So you might be at Fifth Avenue and 42nd Street. But if you walked off the grid into some of the old neighborhoods in the city, you might have seen street names. And for a lot of New Yorkers, the street names drive us crazy because we're so used to numbers and the orderliness of that. But early New York didn't have numbers, it had names. So I thought it might be fun to take a look at some of the streets you might be familiar with and find out how they got their names. So let's take a look at a map first of Lower Manhattan. And here we have a modern map of Lower Manhattan with a bunch of street names and some landmarks like Francis Tavern. And we can see Wall Street and Trinity Church and the World Trade Center. But this doesn't really help us too much. In order to understand how these streets got their names, we have to look back at an older map. So let's start with this one. And the map you see here was published in the 1770s. It's called the Ratzer Plan of New York. It was drawn by a man named Bernard Ratzer. And when we look at this map, the first thing that jumps right out at us is the Broadway Street, a wide street running all the way down through the original city of New York. And it's called the Broadway Street because it was the widest street in the town, or the Broadway. And here's a print of what it looked like. So here's the Broadway, and it is the widest street in the town, and this is looking south from St. Paul's Chapel, which is still here today, through the entire length of the city of New York. So this would be the whole city at the time um, the Broadway Street was named, or as we call it today, Broadway. Now if we look at Broadway today, we can see it runs the entire length of the island of Manhattan from north to south. And uh, we call it Broadway, but you may have run into some older New Yorkers who still call it Broadway with the accent on the way uh, instead of Broadway with the accent on the broad as we say it today. So that's the reason for that. It originally was known as the Broadway, then shortened to Broadway and Broadway as it is today. And it is the only street that runs the entire length of the island north to south. And in some areas, it still is the widest street you'll find. So let's head on now next to a street you may have known or heard of called the Bowery. So here's where the Bowery runs through the Lower East Side of Manhattan Island. So we're still in the lower part of the island, um, south of Greenwich Village, and you can see it says over there on the right, Lower East Side. Um, so Bowery's kind of a weird name, and um, when I was growing up, my dad used to love watching an old TV show, a black and white TV show called The Bowery Boys. Some of you might remember that. It followed the antics of a group of young men growing up on the Bowery, I think in the 1940s. So that would be my dad's generation. For my generation, the Bowery was where we went to see bands at a club called CBGB, some of you might have heard of. And today, it pretty much looks like the rest of the modern city with new, new high-rises and apartment buildings and shops and restaurants. But where did that strange name Bowery come from? Well, it came from farmland. Bowery was the old Dutch word for a land grant or a farm grant. And the areas today that we call Chinatown, the Lower East Side, and Bowery were all farmland during the time of New Amsterdam and early New York. Remember, New York used to be a Dutch colony called New Netherland with a town called New Amsterdam, which was the beginnings of New York City. So this is what the Bowery looked like, or the neighborhood we call the Bowery, looked like in the early 1700s. And if you're familiar with Chinatown today and the big statue of Confucius that's at the intersection of the Bowery, Pearl, and Chatham streets, this is that intersection in the 1600s. So you know that today is a very busy intersection full of traffic and people, um, Chinese restaurants and stores, a very busy spot in New York City. This is that spot originally at Bowery, Pearl, and Chatham Streets. And the road running off to the top of the picture, off to the left, is the Bowery today, and that's running north up to what today would be the East Village, and at the time of this picture, represents it would just be country, it would just be rural land. So this is the original Bowery. 
Now, if we look at some of the things we could have found then on the Bowery, we have a famous tavern there called the Bull's Head um, Tavern, which was very popular in the uh, 1700s. So you can see the Bull's Head Tavern and uh, some animals, some grazing animals going by. It looks like some, I don't know, are those horses or cows or something, a whole bunch of them going by. So it's still, you know, country at the time people enjoyed the Bull's Head Tavern. So let's move on a bit to another street I know you know the name of, and that is Wall Street. And here we have a print that depicts the year 1644. So this is when we were still under Dutch governance. So this is when the town is still called New Netherland or New Amsterdam. A notice is being placed on a tree that a wooden wall is to be built from the East River, which would be the end of the street that we're facing, to the Hudson River, which would be the end of the street behind us, straight across the island from east to west. Um, the notice instructs people in the town that they'll all be responsible for helping to build and maintain the wall and gives the dates and the times that they're expected to show up with their tools um, to start building the wall. Now, it's not a wall like we think of a stone wall or something like that. It's just a wooden wall or a fort wall, or as they would have called it, a palisade. And here is a picture of that a section of that wall or Wall Street palisade after it was built. And it was simply built at the northern end of the town in order to protect it from intruders. So there's Wall Street and how Wall Street got its name. And next we have Greenwich Street. And you can see Greenwich Street runs along the Hudson River from the old city of New York um, or down at the bottom or southern part of the island by the Battery. And it runs straight up along the water to the West Village. And you can see Greenwich Village labeled on there. And it runs for about two and a half miles. Now, New York City, at the time this street was laid, was only the lower part of the island. So if you look on our map where it says New York, that little triangle between the W and the Y would be the northern edge of New York City. So this was the Greenwich Road, and it ran from the little village or city of New York north along the Hudson River to a farming village called Greenwich, and that would be the West Village, part of Greenwich Village today. Now, an interesting thing is if you look along that dotted line, which is the way we would walk if we were walking um, that two and a half miles from the old village up to Greenwich Village, that dotted line represents the original shoreline of the island. The Greenwich Road was a shore road, and everything you see to the left of that line is man-made. So if you're walking through the West Village, um, where it's a very popular street today, Greenwich Street, with, again, restaurants and, and shops and, and places to socialize, um, everything west of where you are is a landfill. And here's a picture of a section of Greenwich Street in 1861, and this says it's below Thames Street, and Thames Street is where Trinity Church is located. So this would have been Greenwich Street, the lower or southern end of it. On the right, we see some homes. At the end is the harbor. You can see some um, water out there. And to the left would be the old Trinity Church. So this is how Greenwich Street um, once looked in the 1860s. And of course, today you know it's just full of you know um, high rises that make up a part of Battery Park City. So let's see what we have next. Oh, Murray Hill. So maybe you've heard of an area called Murray Hill. You can see it's not far from the Empire State Building. And if you visited the um, J.P. Morgan Home Library and Museum, that would have been near Murray Hill. And you can see to the um, right of it on the map is the United Nations. So Murray Hill is a well-known neighborhood on the east side of Manhattan Island, just north of 34th Street. Um, Murray Hill got its name from the Murray family. They were a colonial New York family, and what we call Murray Hill today was their estate, which they called Eichlenburg, and it was a beautiful country estate that overlooked the East River. Now, the Murray families were a very wealthy merchant family. They were originally from Philadelphia. They were Quakers, and they moved here to New York. They also owned the dock, which then was at the base of Wall Street, 
They conducted business down in the city from um, what was called Murray's Wharf, and they lived up here in Eichlenburg. Um, Mary Murray was one of the first ladies in New York to have her own carriage, and it was said that she had the finest wine cellar in all of the city. Now today, Mary Murray is remembered for an incident that occurred during the Battle of Kipps Bay in 1776. The British were invading Manhattan Island at that time at the beginning of the Revolutionary War. And the rumor or the story tells us that Mary Murray delayed the landing and progress of British troops by offering them some of her best Madeira wine. And this print shows the British officers spending the afternoon at Murray Hill with Mary Murray and her family um, while General Washington's army retreated north along the opposite side of the island. So along the Greenwich Road, which ran along the Hudson River. Now, did this really happen? It all depends on who you believe. There are accounts that claim yes, firsthand accounts that say yes, indeed, Mary Murray did delay the British that day in order to give the Americans an edge. Other people say it's impossible for to her to have known um, who was moving which troops where on that day. But incredibly, there was even a live Broadway play about it, I think in the 1950s, I saw some pub publicity stills from the play at one time. And I think the play only ran for about a week, but it depicted this incident in Murray Hill and made Mary Murray the heroine of the American Revolution in New York. Um, either way, whether or not it's true doesn't really matter because for our purposes today, the Murray Hill neighborhood is named for the Murray family who once lived there. And let's see, next, let's take a look at Delancey Street, another street you may have heard of or visited. And Delancey Street, we can see from our map, runs along the Lower East Side. And today, it connects you with the Williamsburg Bridge, although at the time Delancey Street was laid, there was no bridge there. Um, Delancey Street also has a street not far from it called Rutgers Street. And both of these streets are named for the families that had large farms in that neighborhood, the Delancey families and the Rutgers families. They were both wealthy colonial New York families and uh, not only had farms, but were wealthy merchants too. Both families, Delancey and Rutgers, had homes within New York City, colonial New York City, and this is what the Delancey home looked like. It was built at what was then called the corner of Queen and Broad Streets. And if this looks familiar to you, maybe you saw my, my video last week of New York then and now, because the old Delancey home today is Francis Tavern. The Delanceys sold their home to the innkeeper, Sam Francis, who then turned it into the Queen's Head Tavern, which became what we know today as Francis Tavern. So if you visit Francis Tavern, it is the original home of the Delancey family, who also had a farm in what is today the Lower East Side, or then the Bowery. And the Lanceys, I should note, were a powerful family, and they were also a loyalist family, which meant they took the side of Britain during the American Revolution. Some of the Delancey men also commanded or fought in royal regiments against General Washington's forces. As a result of that, they were forced to leave the city after the war, but the street, Delancey, is still named for them. Now let's have a look here of two streets, Barclay Street and Vesey Street. And the star on the map shows us St. Paul's Chapel. Now maybe you visited St. Paul's Chapel on one of my walking tours, or maybe you've just visited it on your own. Um, to the left of it or um, behind it at Church Street, on the other side of Church Street, is the World Trade Center. You may have visited that and the Oculus. And the street just to the north of St. Paul's Chapel is Vesey Street. And the street to the north of that is Barclay Street. Now, how did these streets get their names? Well, check this out. They're the names of two Trinity Church rectors, Reverend William Vesey, who was installed in 1697, and Reverend Henry Barclay, who was installed in 1738. 
Trinity Church, by the way, does have a portrait gallery which holds portraits of every rector of Trinity Church from the first rector, William Vesey, to the current rector. And hopefully that gallery will reopen soon in the future and you can go see those beautiful paintings. So both of those streets are named for early Trinity Church rectors. Now St. Paul's Chapel was and still is a part of Trinity Church and Trinity Church itself was originally a part of the Church of England. But after the American Revolution became its own entity, the Episcopal Church of New York. Now, speaking of Trinity Church, let's take a look at where it is on the map and the streets around it. So here we have Trinity Church, the Episcopal Parish founded in 1697, and right behind it, Trinity Place, of course, named for the church. And to the south of it, um, running along the side of the graveyard where you may have visited Alexander Hamilton's grave, is Rector Street, just a generic street representing the rectors of Trinity Church or the rectory that was once there. So Rector Street and Trinity Place still dating back to old Trinity Church. And here are some views of Trinity Church. On the left is the original church built in 1697. On the top is that church after the great fire of 1776, which destroyed it. And on the bottom is the current church, a photo that I took last summer. Now, if you're walking around New York, maybe you're a New Yorker and you walk around all the time, or maybe you were visiting as a tourist and you needed to get, I don't know, maybe some toothpaste or some shampoo. You might have gone into a store called Duane Reed. A chain, a pharmacy and health and beauty chain, um, unique to New York City called Duane Reed. Um, Duane Reed is actually a part of the Boots Walgreens brand today, but here in New York City, most of them still keep their distinctive Duane Reed brand. And the first Duane Reed, and I guess I should say the whole chain, got its name from two streets. And you see on the map, there's a Duane Street and a Reed Street. And right where the star is, was the very first Duane Reed, which opened on Broadway, I think around 1960, and was named for the streets that bordered it. So Duane Reed is named for the two streets, Duane Street and Reed Street. Now, if you have visited the African Burial Ground, National Monument, you can see it there on our map. These streets also run through the old African burial grounds, the Duane and Reed streets. So the Duane Reed chain named for the two streets. And let's take a look here. Here's a street I bet you can guess the origin of Lafayette Street. And Lafayette Street runs from, you see on here, Foley Square, which is where all the court buildings are today. So if you watch something like Law and Order, and you see the federal courthouse, that's right there at Foley Square. And it runs all the way up to Astor Place or the East Village today. And I bet you can guess who this is named for. Why, of course, it's named for the Marquis de Lafayette or General Lafayette. And this painting depicts him in 1791. So this is after the Revolutionary War. General Lafayette and many other French officers and soldiers joined us in our fight for independence against Britain. But did you know that he was only about 20 years old when he arrived to assist General Washington? I thought that was pretty fascinating that the French officers were so very young, but still had martial experience enough to help General Washington in his efforts. So this is the Marquis de Lafayette for whom Lafayette Street is named. And let's finish up our little tour today with a street named for one of my personal favorite Revolutionary War period New Yorkers, McDougal Street. And here you see McDougal Street just south of Washington Square Park, a part of Greenwich Village. When I was going to school, I went to NYU, by the way, I spent a lot of my college nights on McDougal Street. Uh, McDougal Street was full of restaurants. You might remember it for its musical nightclubs and cafes. In the 60s, 70s, and 80s, it was well known for small music spots um, to go see a lot of really incredible musicians perform, and also cafes that were open all night. You could spend all night in a cafe um, with your friends talking about all kinds of things and it was just a great nightlife and um, I'm happy to have been able to experience that in the 70s and 80s. At that time I had no idea who McDougal Street was named for and I would not know until many years later when I became a historian 
It was named for the great Alexander McDougall. He was a ship captain, a merchant, a founder and leader of the New York Sons of Liberty, a general in the Revolutionary War, and a founder of the Bank of New York with his friend Alexander Hamilton. Captain McDougall, or he was a captain then, spent four months in jail in 1770 for writing a broadside that exposed government and election fraud in New York. Look at that great title, To the Betrayed Inhabitants of the City and Colony of New York. Of course, this was before we had the right of free speech. This is before the United States Constitution. So Captain McDougall was arrested on the charge of seditious libel and spent four months in jail as a result. Um, he was eventually released from jail when the only eyewitness to the authorship of the broad, broadside the died of old age. He was in his 70s, and McDougall, having no witness against him, had to be released. He was a big Revolutionary War hero here in the city, very well loved. He lived into his 80s, and he's buried in the village at the Presbyterian Church at Fifth Avenue and 12th Street. A great New Yorker, Captain or General Alexander McDougall. And that finishes up our quick look at New York City street names. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please share it with anyone you think will like it. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you'll know when I post a new video about New York City's incredible history. And as soon as the bad weather here in New York City clears up, I will be out doing live videos for you again. But until then, I hope you're enjoying these that I'm doing here in my home studio. And I look forward to seeing you next time time.